Recording is on. Okay, we are officially recording our little meeting with um, GNU Tex Info maintainer Davin Smith. Um, this is going to be awesome. We're hopefully we're scheduled for about four, uh, 30 minutes, so that'll be 12:45 my time, I guess. And um, Gavin, can we get just a short introduction to who you are and why you're kind of the main guy behind uh, GNU Tech Info? Well, I mean, the, the reason that, that I'm doing it was uh, a few years ago, I had an interest in just doing some work on, I guess, partic particular features or problems that I had with certain uh, parts of the uh, system, just like th things of interest to me. Um, so, did some like work on um, on those aspects, and then it kind of built up from there and became involved with more and more of diff different parts of the code base. Um, and I think that the previous um, ma maintainer, Carl Berry, who did it, did it for a very uh, l long time, he he kind of, kind of suggested I take over at, at, at some point. And how long have you been kind of the main maintainer for uh, Nuto? A bit over all? five years. Okay. Yeah. Five years. That's that's a pretty long time. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've got a, a series of questions that I, I mentioned we were going to chat with. That kind of is a good segue. Is it pretty difficult to maintain tech info? Um, yeah. What are your ticks of the trade? Well, I mean, I think... The personally, the main kind of obstacle is a lack of time, and well, I probably have time, but I don't have energy, or I don't have enthusiasm for it. Uh, I, I think, well, probably everyone who's been inv involved in software development will know it's not a predictable endeavor. You, you may go in with a uh, what seems like a very simple task that you want to accomplish, but then it, you can spend all day on it. Um, so I, I, th I think it's. Um, that's one difficulty, I, I guess. Um, I, I think it's difficulty with just it's just being familiar with the code base. Um, I think the more work you do with particular with, with the code, the more, more kind of familiar you get with it, and the easier it is to, to deal with. I think um, someone who coming in cold would, you know, take time to to get up to speed. I think I think it was the um, the guy who did the Emacs org mode. Um, he raised like fifty thousand dollars for a year or so. Uh, I think it, I think his final blog post. He sort of shared some of those sentiments that software sometimes just takes a while to to get uh, fixed to, to kind of get it to where you want it to be. Um, I, I've, I'm under the impression that kind of developing open source software is sometimes the, the worst of both worlds. Uh -huh. You can have people from uh, people who want bugs fixed or features fixed, and they aren't very friendly. Have, hopefully, you haven't run into that too much. Well, people I mean, being rude. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say anyone's been rude. Um, I think people have their own experiences of using software and they report problems that are real to them and that they've, they've encountered and you know it's perfectly valid for them to to, to expre express that I think um, you know, the job of the maintainer is uh, a, lot, a lot of it is to say no to people unfortunately <laughs> they don't agree with that that's a good idea um, or that would be a lot of work or it wouldn't fit in well with this the entire system. Okay, I, I guess I never really thought about a maintainer's job. Is half of it saying no? Um, that's that's really interesting. Okay. Uh, so, what, what was your question again? Was it? Um, uh, people, being, people being rude or yeah. people being demanding? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think you know, if people have a genuine issue, you don't mind them explaining and say that's a real problem. Um, so okay. I think if, if they're demanding things that, that are good, then no problem. Okay. Demanding things that are bad, a bad idea. That's that's worse. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I I uh, hang out on a couple of GNU mailing lists, and, and every now and then you get someone who's like really 
die hard for this particular feature. And yeah, sometimes people can get so passionate they can forget that maintainers are, are people too. So, um, okay. So I guess my, my second question that we had discussed, um, do you see that GNU text info being kind of, being kind of an official documentation system for GNU for the next several years, or, or do you see a, a different alternative? I mean, I, 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 in terms of the GNU project, it's really um, play mainly up to Richard St Stallman. Uh, I think he's expressed some ideas that he would like to see some changes to it, but um, not not sure exactly what they are. Um, now, maybe th there might have been something in one of you, the questions you emailed me that may be expressed as maybe a slight misunderstanding. And that's the difference between tech info and info. Is okay. that something you want me to, you know, like me to explain? Yes, please. Yes, tech please. Info is the, uh, is, is the format that the documentation is written in. So this is the format with an ad sign and open, place, open places and closed places. Is the it's, it's how it looks. Uh, the info format is the kind of the plain text, pre-formatted text that's displayed within the info browser or within Emacs. So that actually that format actually loses a lot of the information from the tech info source. Um, so I think some of the frustrations people express with tech info are actually with the the info format. Uh, it doesn't have really good support for marking up italics, bold. Um, obviously, in, inside the uh, info browser, the, the command line info browser, there's no images, although I think Emacs does support images. Uh, fixed width type typefaces are generally what's used in the Emacs, Emacs info and info browser, simply because it's not possible to, to detect what it, if it was supposed to be a fixed width, for example, a code sample, or if it was prose, which could be a like a, a, a regular, you know, serif typeface. Um, so that so people think it looks old and looks ugly. That's because the, the information is not there. Um, also, in terms of marking up the cross references, uh, there's a slight issue with the way that's done. That means that it's not it's not very easy to have a like a link, um, just a link with nothing around it, a plain link. People complain the word C appears in front of links when it shouldn't be there. But that's a, a feature of the info format. I, I think um, in terms of like improving people's experience of using um, documentation on their computers, I think um, info, um, the info format itself, it, it, it's okay, it's good for some purposes. I think it's very good for text terminals, uh, SSH connections, slow connections, it would work everywhere, it's fast, but um, it's limited. So I think w one thing, it, it's not really very well supported at the moment, is, a, is locally installed HTML documentation. Uh, there's a few difficult, I mean, it's not, it's not installed for any really, as far as I can tell, it's not really, doesn't really get installed by operating system distributions, but I think that would be a really good thing uh, to, to move towards. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely agree. Um, I kind of had this epiphany just now. Um, I've assumed that our audience has been um, um, a somewhat technical user. I guess I should back up and explain what GNU Tech Info is. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. That's good and uh, and uh, may maybe you'll just comment if I've missed anything. Okay. So. Um, GNU Tech Info is the official documentation format for the GNU operating system, which of course is the uh, operating system that's supposed to provide you with uh, your four basic uh, software freedoms, which you can look up at fsf.org or gnu.org. Um, what's nice about GNU Tech Info is it can be exported to a variety of formats. Um, the most popular I'm aware of would be your HTML format and your info format. Mm -hmm. um, info is typically... I say PDF, um, so PDF's pretty um, popular as well. Yes, PDF output is also very popular. Thank you for that. Um, and there might even be some others that, that I'm missing. Um, but... Doc, um, doc book. Doc book? Yeah. 
Where do you use DocBook? Where does that pop up most? Well, uh, some people have used, uh, they don't like exactly the HTML output from tech info tools. So what they've done is they've converted it to DocBook and then use doc, the, the kind of DocBook tools to convert that onwards to, um, to HTML. Oh, okay. I, I assume it could be used for printed like PDF or printed output as well. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, and basically for for any sort of GNU project, there's supposed to be a corresponding um, manual, which is typically written in GNU Tech Info um, by convention. And those info manuals are available at your fingertips at your terminal. And you can just open up a terminal and type in info and you'll kind of get to the main window. Um, and, and as as Gavin mentioned, the info program as viewed through the terminal leaves a little to be desired on the eye. It's not quite so pretty. So um, Gavin and I both might recommend for people wanting to try out info to open up Emacs and do a Meta X info. That's much prettier way to view. Info I, mean, I don't think it's that much. I don't think it's that much prettier. Um, okay. I find Emacs a bit clunky, to be honest, to use. Um, okay. If you've never used Emacs before, it's not, I wouldn't say it's worth using Emacs just for using info. Okay. But if, if you live and breathe Emacs, some people do, then obviously that makes sense to use the e Emacs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've got a good understanding of what info is. I should have done that <laughs> at the outset. Um, so I, I guess I hadn't. Um, I'm glad Gavin mentioned that it sounds like Stallman has a, a bit of um, influence over the official documentation system for GNU. Um, and I would say definitely a point in its favor is that tech info is fairly easy to figure out how to write stuff. Um, I've written some tiny contributions for for geeks. And I mean, it's it's very easy once you kind of look at some other examples of how to Add, add your own stuff in. So I would uh, say thank you to the original maintainers and uh, developers to the tech, in, in tech info for that. Um, I guess my next question that I had for you, Gavin, um, I had heard that there was some interest in translating um, media, wiki, media wiki documents into tech info. Um, for those who are not so technically sound, that's the documentation format for Wikipedia pages. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so uh, I guess how how difficult is that? Is that something on the horizon or, or um, not so much? Well, it's not not on the horizon, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, but I mean, it's a good idea. Yeah, it's good, valid, could be useful. Um, I would say, I mean, in theory, yes, it's possible. Um, I don't know a much a huge amount. I've done a little bit of Wikipedia editing a long time ago, then kind of gave it up. But I, I think um, things like cross references, um, headings. A little bit of like bold italics is uh, would transfer c c images would transfer across to um, to tech info. Obviously, um, there's probably there's probably de details. You know, there'll be some there'll be something like some table format formatting or something that might not transfer across. But you know, the, maybe the import like ninety percent of it, the important okay. stuff would probably. Transfer. So, in terms, like you, you may pre, maybe heard of this philosophy of semantic markup, which is, um, is basically you don't you don't say it's bold text, you say it's important text. And um, I think, as far as I can tell, it's the same for media wiki and um, HTML and tech info as well. I mean, I think the issue would probably be implementation and getting the um, manpower to do it. Um, now. You're probably aware that maybe about probably, probably about ten years ago, the converter program for um, tech info uh, was called Make Info, which was the original C program to just, well originally just to convert to info. Then it got extended to convert to HTML and I think DocBook as well. But that was the place that was rewritten in in Perl. I think it was 2012. It was it was rewritten, and this new new program had a com completely new architect architecture. Uh, that was the main work that that was done by Patrick Duma, and this the architecture of this was the program was split in kind of two, and there was a, a preliminary parsing phase where the document would be passed into this kind of data structure, representing the document, like like a parse tree. And then 
the back end would convert that parse tree into um, into the output format, so HTML or info. Now, I think at the time, I think the hope was that this would make it easier for for new back ends to be written. So I think one of the ones which quite hoping would happen was LaTeX um, to provide more customability, customization of the output than what was currently available. Um, the fact is that actually uh, there hasn't been, there hasn't been anyone coming forward to say, or, or to implement, um, to implement new back ends. And I think, and I think just the issue with that is, is just people need to get familiar with the the code base, um, and it's it's difficult. Um, I mean, Perl is not maybe slightly less popular than in some other languages, and I think it's just getting familiar with this big data structure and just just getting started. Even and where do you start? How do you do it? I don't think it's easy um, to to get into it to, to get to get into it and work out how work out how you do it. Um, I, I think, um, I mean, I would almost rec I would almost say it would be better just for s if someone wanted to do MediaWiki output just to start a completely new program, which takes input for tech info and outputs MediaWiki. Now, someone probably, could, someone probably could write a program to do that, and then they wouldn't have to speak to me about it or anyone else or consult with anyone else. They could just make one. It works for their purposes, and that's good enough. A uh, slight problem with that is, um, I think one of the issues is macros and conditionals. It's a feature of the tech info language, which since the beginning of, of that feature being implemented in the language, uh, from what I can tell, it's, all, it's, it's, it's historical. It's, I was quite, you know, I was a long time ago, but um, it was always caused compatibility problems, uh, especially with, with tech, the implementing, the kind of macro facility that was implemented in tech info in tech is, is difficult or almost impossible to get complete compatibility between the way it's done in tech and the way it's done in in the program written in C or the program written in, in Perl. So if someone did write a completely new program to output uh, MediaWiki, I mean, that might be fine, but the, there may be uh, compatibility issues with macros. So that's that's it, yeah. Okay. Um, so you actually just inspired me actually another question. Okay. Um, can, can you talk about the differences between LaTeX, Tech Info, and Tech? Okay. Well, Tech was a typesetting system developed by, as you know, Donald Knuth um, to write his books, and it's become extremely popular, and it's like, like a, a mainstay of uh, academic pu publishing uh, literature. Um, now, LaTeX is uh, a set of tech macros that on top of tech, and people using um, people creating documents uh, like like academic literature would generally use LaTeX. Um, now, uh, Tech Info is uh, well, you can say it's like a documentation language, but it's it's got two official doc two official implementations. One implementation is the converter program written in Perl, which is the one I was telling you about. Uh, tech, well, it, it was called Make Info, and that's the implementation now is called Techie2Any. Um, the other official implementation of Tech Info is a set of tech macros. Now, now that is built on top of tech. It's not built on top of LaTeX or LaTeX. So you can't use LaTeX features in Tech info. Okay. Even if it, yeah, so that's it. Okay. Okay. Thanks for that. Very, very helpful. Um, I guess my fourth question I was planning on asking you, um, you know, a, a rudimentary Wikipedia search would answer this question, I suppose. Um, but what are some of the languages that tech info is written in? Yeah. So, as I mentioned before, Perl um, is the converter program. Um, now, actually, I'll tell you something. Uh, when this program was first released, uh, the, the techie to, it, to any um, was extremely slow. I would say, um, it was been so slow it would make people not want to use it. I mean, to kind of give you an impression of something, the, um, 
I mean, just for my, for my memory, the, the kind of testing I was doing. So the Emacs Lisp manual for my testing, I remember that took about a minute 50, a minute and 50 seconds to process to, to output. Um, now, um, uh, the, the old C make info program could do, could do it in about a second. And I'll tell you something that's even worse. The old C make info program processed the Emacs Lisp manual in its entirety faster than it took the new implementation to output its usage message. If you, if you techie to, in techie to any double dash help, that was slower. <laughs> so um, it's a bit faster now. I mean, it's not as fast as it was. Uh, not as fast as the make info the old make info program although it's, it's superior in many ways i mean the old make make info program didn't deal with unicode for example and okay. it's handling handling of mac macros which i said was a an issue a, a big compatibility issue the handle handling of macros has been greatly improved and um there's a lot of kind of cases have been improved uh, in the output um so what was I talking about? Yeah, so the way we made this program faster was to rewrite some of the Perl uh, code in C. So rewrite some of it back into C. And actually, just initially, it was um, a got very good uh, speed up. I think it was about 33% or wow. something. We sped up by. And it, all, all it was that we did was um, there's a, a module in the um in, in the program which is it, it basically takes words in and fills them up to the length of a line so say say it's 72 characters or whatever it is it's the width of a line taking words in filling up the line and then when it gets to the when the line gets full going on to the next line and filling it up and um and the, just re rewriting that bit of the program i mean it, it sounds simple when i explain it but obviously there's more complications so you might you might have chinese characters for example or you may oh, have okay. certain bits you have may have certain sections of text that aren't supposed to be split across a, a line because it, it's, it's like a non-breaking space um so it's, it sounds simple but it, it is slightly more complicated than that but just just okay. changing that bit of it really sped up the program um, there was a couple of other bits we rewrote, which um, also sped it up. Now, in the last release, um, oh well, a recent release anyway, we we um, included an optional. It was like a feature that was just optionally included. Was it was the entire parser module of the program, which I mentioned before, creates this tree parse structure. Um, re rewrote all of that in C. Now, that took me a while to do, just in my spare time. But um, that, so I think with, with that, that's also a huge. Maybe that was thirty. Maybe that was thirty-three percent or something. I can't remember exactly. But so I think now. Uh, I mean, I think now it's down to about ten seconds for the Emacs Lisp. I mean, I've also, I've also, I mean, I've changed computers in between, so maybe my computer's slightly faster than it, than it was. But I think it's tolerable now. I mean, that's my point of view. It's tolerable. Okay. Yeah. So that's um, uh, yeah. Obviously, obviously, some operating system distributions have disabled it, um, and because it, it didn't wasn't reliable. But hope, hopefully, most people using TechInfo will use will, will be using the C extensions and be getting fast run times. Um, I mean, there's other bits of the other bits of the overall tech info package are written in C, and as you know, as as I mentioned before, the the layer on top of it to do printed outputs, a PDF, and uh, DVI is, um, is is implemented in tech. Okay, um, just real quick, you mentioned yeah. D DVI. What is that? Oh, DVI. Well, that's basically the original output format uh, from tech is uh, DVI um dispense the device device independent but okay uh, you should probably be using pdf i think in, instead okay um I, yeah i personally haven't had any issue issues with uh um converting tech info to, to any of the various manuals i've always thought its speed was was very performant um uh, person never had any issues so I'm, I'm thanks for uh fixing something before it even became an issue that's pretty awesome <laughs> Well, other people, other people have had, other people have had, had, have had issues. 
Okay. Okay. Well, we have a good new maintainer who uh, fix issues. So thank you, Gavin. Appreciate that. Yes. So we've got our, our next question here um, is text info, one of the more portable documentation systems. I'm not even sure how you really want to define portable here, um, but does it work on most OSs? What do you think? Um, I, yes, I'd say so. It's one of the things before a new release is probably um, one of the big things that holds back releases is testing on different systems. Um, I mean, there's a couple of people that helped me out a lot with Autom like r running it on a lots lots of different um well virtual like unix GNU, linux bsd uh, all different platforms um you know, like unix style systems so that on that side of things it's uh works pretty well um it was a version done for um, a long time um uh, maintainer ellie i don't know how you say it ellie zavetsky uh, takes a lot, a lot of interest in the uh, Windows. Okay. Version. Okay. And I believe I believe there's also a version for Sigwin, which is, is like an a environment that runs on top of 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 Windows. So okay. as far as I, as far as I can tell, it's. I mean, I've never. I don't know about Mac. I've, I've no. I don't know. But as far as I can tell, okay. all the important uh, systems. It, um, <laughs> yeah. I, know, but, I appreciate. But was that an intentional jive? No, no, well, no, I, I, no I, was of like, I was thinking of like Amiga or something, but uh, okay. I'm sure I'm sure it would have been on Mac. I'm sure it would. I've just teased you guys. Yeah. I just thought it was no, really funny. Okay. No, just, just, <laughs> no, choice of words there. It wasn't a little bit. That's okay. It's okay. Um, so I guess this little sub question just popped up too. Um, would you say GNU Tech Info is mainly used for GNU manuals, or is there another use case that's fairly popular up there um, as well? Um, I can see it does seem to be mainly GNU manuals. Okay. Um, okay. I'm sure there's others. I'm sure. I, I, know, I know. I know there are there are non GNU tech info manuals, but it does seem. I mean, most of the a lot of the tech info manuals seem to be Emacs modes having their own tech info okay. manuals. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a good. I think it's a good um, system. But so nothing stops it. If if it, nothing stops someone writing a um manual and tech info if they want to okay yeah i mean i i've like i said i've liked it it's pretty it's pretty um legit works pretty well um i guess this the sixth question that's a good segue to my sixth question uh -huh. um so i i've written and, and bear in mind you know i've not written a ton of documentation i've contributed tiny tiny things to existing documentation but one of the things um I have is I sometimes find it a little difficult, like to add a new section or a new uh -huh. chapter. Yeah. Um, yeah, you have to have like multiple section lines, and then maybe one for the heading line. Um, is there a way that you know to automate that process? Uh, well, I mean, I, I know I know Emacs does have Emacs has a mode for editing tech info files. I've I've never used it to be honest because uh, okay. I don't use Emacs, but uh, so that would automate a lot of it. Um, I think some of it's down. I mean, there's, there's, there's really two issues that I'm aware of with what I think what you're saying. It's difficult to change the structure to add sections or to remove sections. Uh, one, well, the first one's easier to deal with is you're saying you have to have like two lines, and I, I agree that I, that's not ideal. Um, so if so, each tech info man manual split into nodes of information. So the first line would be a node line. So it begins at node, then the name of the node. Then you'd have your heading, which would be like a section or a chapter. So then next line could be at section, and then it would be the name of the section. So I think in terms of that, that's it's you just copy and paste and change the name, um, or change from node, change node to section. It's you, probably usually what you do, but obviously it's maybe slightly annoying. You may not see the point of it, but it's fairly harmless. Um, I mean, may, I mean kind of maybe in the future that'll be done automatically and you won't need to have node lines. That's kind of a, a way down the line yet for the future of the language. That, that I think that would be a nice thing. I think that would be a good thing to do. Um, now, the other issue is menus. So talk a bit about menus. Um, the men, so in each, um, in each node of, of tech info, you may have, um, so say it's a chapter, okay? 
But in that ch in the chapter node, you would have a menu which lists the, the sections in that chapter. And generally speaking, in in tech info documents, that the, that would that menu would be there. And if you if you add a new section or delete a section, then you would also do the same to the menu. Uh, and you and you may you may ask, well, what what, what is the point of the, of the menu? Why do you then have to go and add in this? You've put the, you've put the section there. Why why do you then have to go and change the menu as well? Why why can't the menu be automatically update created or updated? So as I said, Emacs um, mode for editing um, tech info documents. It could it could update the menu automatically. It could do that. I believe in I believe in fairly recent tech info releases. The menu is optional. If you wanted to, you could just delete that menu in the chapter, and it would be created automatically. One slight issue is section names in theory don't have to be unique. Whereas no, whereas no, hang on, no, that's not an issue. That's an issue with something else. Yeah, so that that, that would be okay. Um, I think the reason to have the menu is for the sake of info. So the info mode of e of Emacs. Um, the um but basically a menu has more information than just a list of chapter uh, it, it has more information than a list of section titles uh one thing it allows you to do in, in a menu is you don't just have the node name you can also have the entry name for the uh for the menu entry and uh, as far as i can tell the main use of this would be as if you didn't have a mouse okay so from i can see in um when info was first created it was imp it was navigated through the keyboard so for example you might have several sections or chapters which begin with the same um text and then if you want to navigate to that to that node then you'd want to type in you'd have to type it in whereas if you can make the label for the for that menu entry something shorter then you you could it would be easier to type in um Obviously, for, for, for the purposes of outputting HTML, that's completely irrelevant because people people tend that people tend to click on links. They don't type in the, na the name of links. So I think that, I think that's a bit of a relic. Um, so uh, yeah, so that's I think I think that's the reason why changing the structure of tech info documents can be difficult. It's because of the menus. So if you get rid of the menus, it should be easier. Okay. Um, I, I, I do want to give you a compliment. I do yeah. actually like um, pressing the I key for indices in oh, Emacs. Yeah. yeah. I think that was a fantastic feature. Um, it, actually, it actually syncs up with Helm mode pretty well. So uh, it, with, with, some with, with what mode? Uh, Helm mode. Oh, hel like, Helm mode, OK. Um, H-E-L-M. Yeah. Okay, um, it. Yeah, it, it's, almost, it's almost snazzier, like quickly searching through your manual offline via that, it's almost faster than using Google and, and better in some ways. Well, it would be, I mean, it depends on your network connection, but it's, okay. I don't think it's something I've, well, yeah, it, it's a good, it's good. It's, um, I mean, for one thing, I'm, I guess there's two ways of thinking about it. Google is artificial intelligence and um, the index searches is, is manually curated. So someone's actually decided to put an index entry there. And I think it goes both ways. I think. You know, I probably like, and again, it's just pie in the sky, or well, blue sky thinking anyway, but like to see maybe local documentation search that does, that does what Google does and is just does it automatically. Um, you may be using some kind of neural network. Now, that's, I've no idea how you would implement that, but maybe someone does, um, maybe project for the future. Um, but I, I, yeah, but in, things like index search, like, like for, I mean, something I use a lot is um, the, the libc manual. And if I want to look up a function, it's just very quick to look up the documentation for that particular function using the index. OK. Uh, okay. It's also it's something that's kind of missing from HTML documentation. If you're reading HTML documentation online, you tend not to have the um, in, uh, like any index lookup feature. So I think definitely it can be, I think, using info can be better th th to find what you're looking for than using HTML. Okay. 
Cool, cool. Um, I guess the last question I had, because I, I do so want to add, add something that was going to uh, something I mentioned. I think it's also I think it's really important that your documentation is installed locally on your computer and not anyone else's. Because I mean, for one, it gives you it gives you control. It means you're not leak, leaking information. You're not you're not telling Google what you think. You're not telling Stack Overflow what you think. You, you've got your privacy. Documentation that's installed is. Um, is probably relevant to your version. You're not getting some out-of-date version. Okay. Um, and I think it's a good. I think we really think it's important that software has good documentation, and because uh, obviously it doesn't have good documentation, it's it's not. It could be very powerful, but if people don't know how to use it, then it's no it's no good. I I would highly agree. Yeah. Um, that's that's a, a sentiment Stalin Stallman's expressed several times, I believe. Um, and and there's a couple of software packages written in guile that i want to play with but i just don't know how to use it the okay. manual is not quite okay. up to snuff okay. <laughs> um i guess the last question i have okay. for you um you know I, I personally think tech info looks great or info i guess looks great inside of emacs are you aware of any other guis that display tech info um i mean not really i mean the only thing that's kind of being or being developed was uh there's a javascript um Kind of well, I, I think this was the question that I thought that meant that you misunderstood what tech info was and what info okay. was, because obviously you can view tech in, you can view HTML um, manuals inside a web browser, so that would be a GUI to view a tech info manual. Gotcha. Um, now that there, there has been work done, um, there was, it was part of a Google Summer of Code project. Um, I think the name of the person who did it was Matthew Lurzin. Oh, I don't know how you say his name. But um, he, he, he did work on a, a JavaScript program that was intended to, to have the, some of the features of, um, of info mode, but inside a web browser, especially the index search. So that uh, is something that I would say is, is experimental. Um, it is available. Uh, so I, I, it, it only deals with what, only issue I'd mention is it, it just deals with one manual at, at a time, whereas the info uh, browser uh, deals with lots of manuals. But, uh, it, if, it, if it works reliably, it'd be definitely an improvement on just the kind of the bare bones H HTML. Sure. Um, I, I, I don't know if you've uh, seen the GNU Geeks, Geeks manual, but they have some cool little JavaScript where it like highlights I've the seen parentheses. That. Well, yeah, I've seen the syntax highlighting. Uh, this is actually something that should be included in the next tech info releases. Better, better support for enabling syntax highlighting in that when you have a, a, a block of code that you can there's a, you, you can denote, uh, I can't think of the word, you, you can state the language that that code is, in, is written in, and that would be uh, moved across to the HTML um, output, and then that would make it maybe slightly easier to syntax highlight. Yeah, but from what I can see, the um, the Geeks, or I don't know, maybe it's Geeks, maybe it's Guile, I don't, I don't know, but, it, but uh, the code samples seem good with, um, and also the contextual links of individual keywords, but you can click on the individual keyword and go to documentation of that symbol is, uh, seems very good, yeah. Yeah, but they got, they got some good, good people over there. Um, yeah, just, just be respectful of your time. I suppose yeah. the last question I should probably ask, you know, maybe a roadmap for tech info and maybe a, a call out to people who would like to help. Uh, that would be a great question to answer, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, well, in terms of a roadmap, um, new, new, more support for more output formats would be good. Uh, LaTeX is one, MediaWiki is, is another. Um, I can give a few kind of hints on how you would start that kind of project if anyone wanted to to email the the mailing list bug bug dash techinfo at gnu dot org would be the place to, to discuss it. Um, I think the JavaScript browsing interface is is worthwhile. So if people in people are experienced and knowledgeable are interested in JavaScript web development, that could be a great project. Uh, another project which is maybe not so far along is uh, there's a 
a, 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 a program being written to to view locally installed HTML documentation that uses a, an embedded web browser called uh, WebKit GTK. Um, so if people were really interested in pushing forward H locally installed HTML documentation, that could be a program people could look at. Um, so in terms of getting involved, all I could say is for myself, um, I started with just looking at the info browser myself. I think it's, it can be difficult to, um, you know, it's a very big project, there's a lot of code, thousands and thousands of lines of code, but just find, uh, what, what I hope someone does is find some new, new, new contributors, find some new way in and just find some project that, that they can do and be successful in. And, you know, that, that, that would be great if, if they could do that. Can't think okay. of anything else. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Well, uh, Gavin, I, I really thank thank you for your time. Um, I, I like I said, I, I really do appreciate the tech info documentation, and I'm, I appreciate you maintaining it. And um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. All right have a nice day. This. You too. Okay. Let me see. Here. Stop recording.